HN, did you know that each and every's gender inclusive deodorant is formulated for sensitive skin? It's made without aluminum, parabens, baking soda, alcohol, and synthetic fragrances. In fact, each and every has been found to provide odor protection equal to an antiperspirant without the aluminum. And it was founded by two women in the beauty industry who were frustrated by the lack of high quality natural deodorant options. One of the founders holds a PhD in molecular and developmental biology, which helped her design and formulate each and every. And they just launched sustainable plant-based packaging. It's available for all full-size and mini deodorants and is an eco-conscious carbon negative alternative. That's right. So visit eachandevery.com slash mom. Eachandevery.com slash mom and use promo code MOM for 30% off your first purchase. That's not eligible to combine with other discounts or subscriptions. That's promo code mom at eachandevery.com slash mom. I need to pour myself a morning cocktail. Please go and make it like a <laughs> make it like a one of those weird videos where they just focus on the sound. What do you call those when S- Do you have a cocktail there? No, I have an energy drink. That sounds terrible. Put some vodka in I'm it. I'm going to Jen, but I need a second to let my ass unwind. I feel like we've been slapped around for like 20 minutes figuring this out. Tech sucks. I know. Well, this is the last time that we're going to do a podcast this way, probably. Hand to God, I hope that well, is what happens. Th- the next step would be eventually we get to come back into this office, which was our initial idea, and have our quality time and our podcasting time in my house. Which, and it'll all be set up. Yeah. But I need to have this fucker saged because it's been so stressful. <laughs> It is. I gotta have it somebody is, come uh, in and like take out the stress ball energy of this space, or my husband. <laughs> wave, wave your selenite wand around. No, oh, I'll do God. it too. This is the dumbest thing. All right, fine. I'm wearing selenite right now, and Ooh, just to make sure it makes you feel good. I don't know how that works. I'm going to drink straight from the bottle. I'm going to yep. drink straight from Same-sies. the bottle. But I did watch you just well, make your mimosa, Jen, and I laughed because we've talked about this before, but when you add orange juice to your mimosa, it's like you're using an eyedropper. Yeah, it's just a splash for the color. That's how Renee is, then too, and she got mad at me when I added too much orange juice. She was like, what the hell are you doing? I was like, oh, no. my I, bad. I don't need the... I don't need the calories. I need the booze. That's, That's right. What... Yeah, I appreciate that you have a champagne chiller behind you and it's already open. <laughs> I'm, I came prepared. I mean, it's that's so what ha- that's what we got to do. Uh, I've got it on ice packs. So if I get injured during the show, too, I have something to like relieve the swelling, which who knows? I have who some CBD knows? oil that. I used on my <laughs> lower back and my hand, and I will, I will slather my entire body with it and eat a bag of edibles to change my mood right now. Does it work? It works. Do you great. feel like it works? I think it works great because okay. I have, you know, in my family, there's like this is so sexy. Get ready, everybody. Let's let's dig into a little quality time here. Beauty. 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 I have bursitis in my right hip and I have some inflammation due to early onset arthritis because it's hereditary in my family. Mm -hmm. And so CBD oil and all of that good stuff has made a vast difference in my joints. And I know it has for a lot of people too. Uh, I wish I could take it for my head. I wish I enjoyed being high, but I don't. I think everyone's trying to kill me, but I do. uh, I like the topicals. I think they're really nice. I'm going to try them. I have not tried them yet, but I will. And you're supposed to Noth- be able to do a a, <laughs> a pot suppository for or up your your who <laughs> for cramps. That's a whole thing. There's a whole thing. Mm. And in your <laughs> for I'm, which is not you know my cup of tea, but well, uh, I mean, I think I think you know you could probably put anything in your butt. Uh, you know, size allowing, but that I don't know if I want to. If we're trying to give me a good time, it, going straight into my back door is not the good That's, time for me. No. Call me no fun at a party. That's fine, but I don't want it. I 
I, the only way I would do it is if they were like, if you put this in your butt, you will have um, immediate weight loss. I would probably be like, oh, yeah, I'd try that. I'd give that a go. Here, put this in I your butt. You will lose seven pounds. I, I'd be like, everybody turn around or don't. It's going in right now and it's brunch. I'm I'm not messing around with it. That's gross. And uh, I, <laughs> I know. Sorry Quality about that. Quality time we, spent with your friends talking about things going in your into butt. Into your butt. To your butt. <laughs> or things not going into your things butt in not, my I case. can I can list a lot of things that are not going in there. I don't want to be graphic, but. You know what? It's much easier for me to list things that are going in. Maybe maybe a thermometer if I'm at like an old timey doctor. I don't know. If but you're getting else. a rectal thermometer, you need to check out what doctor you're going to. That That's the most stands- accurate ther- thermometer, though, is the rectal, right? I, I mean, I think that's what that guy's telling you for a reason. He's like, I should really take your th- temperature rectally and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my wiener. <laughs> It gives the most accurate reading. Ooh. What is it wrong with a very with us? large thermometer. I don't know. I don't know. Let's scratch all of this. She's, scratch your butt. <laughs> scratch. All right, you guys. Kristen has to tell you about FrameBridge because she's been telling me about it so much. <laughs> I love FrameBridge. I've been with FrameBridge. We've been dating for a very long time. FrameBridge is this really awesome like framing service where you can send in, you can send in a digital print. You can actually send in actual prints or artwork or diplomas or whatever, or you can send in something that you want like hung in a shadow box. Like for instance, I sent in my grandfather's jersey. This is like a year ago. <laughs> That's so sweet. So it's a really awesome service. And basically all you do is you upload your photo or they send you the packaging so you can send it in. Yeah, that's what I did when I tried it. They like send you a safe packaging. They ask like, do you need a roll up thing? Do you need a flat package? You get it to them and then you go on and go online, choose dozens of different frame styles, mats. You can try out different colors and things like that. And the shipping's all free. It is free. And then (laughs) it's so awesome because everything looks really expensive. But the frames start out at as low as 39 bucks. And like Jen said, shipping is free. And now if you're our listener, you can get 15% off with the code IMOMSOHARD. You should get started today. Frame your photos or send someone the perfect gift. Go to framebridge.com and use promo code IMOMSOHARD to save an additional 15% off your first order. Just go to framebridge.com, promo code IMOMSOHARD. That's framebridge.com, promo code I mom so hard. Hey, Jen, have you found that you've had to be extra creative during this time where our kids are at school in our house? I found that I should be. <laughs> this Halloween may look a little bit different. But the treats don't have to stop at candy, although they should probably include candy, right? Mm -hmm. With the KiwiCo Hands-On Science and Art Project, your ghoulies won't go batty with boredom. Instead, they'll be inspired by KiwiCo's seriously fun and innovative creative problem-solving crates delivered right to your door every month. No bones about it. (laughs) I love puns about Halloween. And what's neat about these crates is you get – there's several projects inside each one. Yeah. And you get to do them together. It's not a screen. They're really creative and cool. They're kind of like high end. Basically, you make a toy to play with. You're going to – yeah. So it's not a one and done. It's not not a one and done. It's not a glitter project. It's not a glitter project. So thank God for that. And it's hard to find new creative ways to keep kids busy while stretching their brain, especially nowadays. KiwiCo does all the legwork for you so you can spend more quality time tackling projects together. Get real high quality engineering science and art projects for your kids and your kid at heart. You. (laughs) With different crates for kids of all ages, there's something for everyone. KiwiCo has seven lines underneath its umbrella, including the panda crate and koala crate for infants and toddlers, all the way up to doodle crates and eureka crates for the older kids and teens in your family. There's no commitment, so you can press pause or cancel at any time. KiwiCo is redefining learning with hands-on projects that build confidence, creativity, and critical thinking skills. There's something for every kid or kid at heart at KiwiCo. Get 30% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash mom. That's K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash M-O-M. Do you like my shirt, though? I wore it specifically for today. I can't, well, I can't see it very well because we're doing everything through this like micro screen, but it looks cute. I know. It's thank you. I am wearing a green shirt with Airedales all over it because <laughs> you love a good. You've called me an Airedale. You love Airedales. What kind I of a dog is an Airedale? 
Uh, they're like a big terrier. They're the ones that have like the very like sloped nose and like super wiry, like coarse, bristly hair. Like, um, like a, a detective from London would have one, you know, like they're big brown. Oh, it sounds like you, it was like, it's the Miley Cyrus of dogs. Is that accurate? No. No. No, it's more, uh, hmm, who did, uh, um... It's fine. Boy, I, I just know. I think the detective in London gave me the right idea. I think I know what you mean. Does it look like yeah. you're wearing a wig? Depending on like how they're cut, like they're so weird. So my aunt and uncle have always had Airedales and they had this one that I really loved for the longest time. He was huge and his name was Gandalf because they name all of their pets from characters in the Lord of the Rings series. Oh God, like so many dogs. They've had, oh my God. Arwen, They're like, all right, Balin, we got second row extras. We've got Furciferous and like there's so many oh, people in those. <laughs> ba- and they've had so many dogs and cats that like they because they they don't have kids. So they get always Airedales and always cats. And we, it used to be when you called their um, answering machine back in the 80s, it would be like, hello, you've reached the third inner realm of Earth. <laughs> Gandalf, Balin, and Arwen, Bob and Karen are unavailable right now. Please leave a message. What a bunch of weirdos. Well, they definitely smoked pot. I'm pretty sure they won't. They just won't like cop to it. They were real hippies. Yeah, I don't know why that's the drug they're denying because there's a lot more on the list from the way it sounds. They're like, guys, let's take some LSD and live in a larger land. Well, you know, people can judge. So I'm not judging. My I whole, think it sounds wonderful. Well, people in my family will judge. They will oh, well, happily judge. That's so what that's, family's for. <laughs> that's what my family's for. I'm that's sure. what my family's for too. I promise. Can I tell you but, on that note? Oh, sorry. T- no, keep c- keep going. I did have a really funny thing about Terry. Oh my God! Please tell me. Okay, I'll go back to it. So my mom called me yesterday. And she goes. You know, I was at uh, so-and-so's having, oh, God. No, I was at Dan Hurlberg's. That's his name. Dan and Susan Hurlberg having dinner. And boy, they told me. I'm not going to. This is this is how you know Facebook spies on you. Susan Hurlbert came up in my Facebook feed that your mom had, like, commented on something. What a weird. Because my well, my mom knows them. It's Nebraska. Everybody's connected Everybody's by connected. one degree. Dan and Susan, big fans of ours, so much so, maybe more than my parents. Uh, Dan tells my mom, listen, if you're listening to the podcast, don't listen to this one about uh, I get mothered because it might hurt your feelings. And I thought that was so because oh. I was like, oh, did I say something terrible? And my mom calls me and she's like very defiant. She's like, I will have you know, I have never served your children Velveeta. And I was like, that's your take. That's the thing that made, I like kind of threw her under the bus, but her takeaway is that she's never, how dare I bring up that she has covered vegetables in Velveeta, which she 100% has. I just wanted to. That is hilarious. I know. She's like, you know what offended me about your commentary on my parenting? Velveeta cheese. Yeah. That is those children of yours love me because I'm wonderful, not because I feed them breakfast ice cream. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what's funny, too. Well, she's is- done. Okay, sorry. I go back. I digress to Airedales, to your weird uh, family. Not weird. Your colorful family. No. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I was just about to say that I come from like a huge dog family because everybody has dogs. But I forgot we my grandparents have also had parrots and monkeys. So we are just an animal loving. And you know what their monkey's name was? What? Tammy. That's so dumb. (laughs) It's so dumb. (laughs) And it used to bite everybody. Everybody like when. The first time that my husband was at a dinner with everybody, somehow this monkey came up and he was like. I've never heard of anybody actually having a monkey. What's its name? And I swear to God, everybody turned their head at the exact same time and screamed, Tammy, because everybody has scars all over from this monkey biting their arms. Like it was so smart and so diabolical. It would like unscrew. It would stick its fingernail in the base of its cage and unscrew it. And then like 
take the top of the cage off and then just attack people. I mean, fair, right? Like you're you're housing yeah. like a wild animal like that has a certain amount of intelligence. I do not I I do not want an animal that I know is half smarter than me, which I kind of am in that boat right now. And I'm telling you, like, that is not what I'm signing up for. I, no, I want the you, one if, that's like kind of the anchor clanker in class. No offense. I just want the one that's like real, real salt to the earth, real go with the yep. flow, doesn't really question anything. That's how my golden retriever is. You could literally put a chalk drawing around her and you could be like, don't you dare leave your cage. She'd be like, <laughs> like an ant. Yeah. She'd be like, oh God. <laughs> and then she would just be like, but why the tone? Why the harsh tone? I, I would stay here because I need you to love me. <laughs> but she is such a lovely dog. Like your dog. I've always been like very anti purebred dog just because like I've come from a world of rescue. Like, Every, except for my aunt uncle's Airedales, everybody <laughs> would like, if you accidentally, like you couldn't even like take a wrong turn past an animal shelter without one of my uncles stopping to pick up a dog. Like that's how my, gra- like everybody had dogs in our family and they were all these misfit mutts that we loved but cussed about. And then I meet Sky, your golden retriever. And I'm like, now I get it. I, listen, I, I. I won't even unpack all of it, but basically when we, uh, I had been uh, destroyed by my last dog that was a uh, a, a pet, uh, uh, what do you call it? A rescue. And she ended up not being the dog I thought she was. She was literally seven years of pain and heartbreak. I loved her, but she was literally the, I had a dog trainer that I paid to help me with this dog. And when I got back, they go, we're not charging you for the next three days. We can't help you. Literally, like that's they okay. literally like I think they quit and became something else because of my dog. Let that, me. Yeah. <laughs> let me ask you a question. I think in your mind you have turned this dog into a rescue, but I seem to recall you paying a guy in Koreatown 400 bucks oh. for what you thought was a Labrador that ended up being like a dingo squirrel hybrid of some sort. Who Jen, made I'm your gonna life. get so much shit about looking. That's what you get, man. I was trying to be. I I saw this ad on Craigslist, and I went to this guy's really creepy apartment, and I saw this cute little tiny dog that they told me was a Labrador. And then eight weeks later, I was like, "This dog, this might not even be a dog. I think I adopted a coyote." <laughs> <laughs> so Chris was like, I got this Labrador. I'm like, that's not Labrador is going to have pointy long ears that stand up four inches off the top of their head. And yeah. they don't have two sets of bicuspids. That doesn't look. I, I'm telling you, I think you're right. I think it's a dingo. I think, I think God love her. She, it, she is with a different family that I paid lots of money to take her. Lots. Of, I mean, yeah. literally, like I didn't have cash to throw around, and I was like, I will not eat for three months if you take this dog. So my conscience is clean because she, it became a liability. She was starting to attack other dogs because she'd been attacked. Oh yeah. Anyway, so then when we got to I, the point where we got a dog, I was like, I want a dog. This is how I came up with a golden retriever, and this is my sales pitch. I was like, we've got a a brand new five year old and a brand new three year old. I want to know if you put your finger in that dog's butt, that dog is not going to attack. It would just feel really like you hurt its feelings, but would never show any aggression because it it had to be like that. And so that's what we got with Skye. And she is literally the kindest, sweetest, yeah. most affectionate, loving creature that has nothing else to offer as a dog. Literally. Like there was a- And you'd, you- Yeah. You didn't get her from like a pet store. You got no. her from like a farm. You I got, got her, her from, from like a, farm. a. We paid out yeah. the nose. We did it. And I know there's a lot of. I, listen, I, I. But then. No, there's not. No, there's not. Listen, I, nobody loves dogs more than me. You know this, right? Right. Like, I love them more than people. Like, if you gave me the option to save in the middle of the street a dog or a person, unless it's my kids, it's going to be the dog. Well, I like know it just where is. I fall now. It's fine. I can take a car. I can take a hit by a car. A dog can't, but I can. I'm a, I'm I'm big boned. I can do it. I, well, I, I expect like my husband. He should know better. Don't stand in the street. Okay. Don't stand in the don't, street. Like, don't force me to decide. But I can't. 
It's so funny because I can't wait till we talk about the second dog that I got, which is your fault. But it's it's funny that we're talking totally. about dogs because I literally started thinking about dogs once we came up with the idea. And I was like, oh, my God, what a fun like conversation for Jen that we haven't like unpacked before. And then I started to write down and I was like, Jen's dog, Venus, Jen's dog, Jupiter, Jen's dog, Jaja, <laughs> Jen's <laughs> husband's dog, Kaylee, Jen met at a dog park, Jen's current dog, Jen's two new dogs. I'm like, this woman has had like a pet store in the time I've known her. <laughs> like, there's been I so love many. dogs so much. Like it cannot be overstated that sometimes like, I mean, I love my kids with all of my heart, like there, but it, there's no but involved in that. I honestly, though, feel guilty to dogs about how much I love my kids. Like, if that makes any sense. Like, I, my kids win hands down, but I'm like, mm, you're just not Dasher Delilah. Sorry, dog. Oh, I, I sometimes am like, I think I like Sky better sometimes. I'm going to be honest. Oh, for sure. You yeah. know why? Yeah, like is different. Because I can look in, in Sky's eyes and I look at her and she looks at me and she's like, you're enough. You are literally perfect the way you are. All As I want are. is time yeah. with you. I want to sit at your feet. I want you to pet me. And that is enough. That's literally all this dog requires. That's, I, this is, I don't know if it's like Winston Churchill or Mark Twain or one of those smarties said, dogs have none of the virtues I detest and all the vices that I admire. Well. Like dogs love too much. They indulge too much, but they're not like judgy or like, I, you know, they're, I agree. They're perfect. They're perfect. And you know, they bring such good goodness to your life. I will say this. <laughs> when you have a golden retriever, they are, they're like a very sensitive Malibu Barbie. They're like very, <laughs> they're like beautiful, beautiful, long legged, long legged. They don't want to think too much. Like we went on a walk. Mm -hmm. I literally went on a walk with, sky before the pandemic and went to say hi to my neighbor and I was walking in our neighborhood and there was the biggest coyote I've ever seen in the moonlight it was like a movie and I I've talked about this before because I was like oh my god she's this dog could really hurt sky and I looked over at sky and sky was like hey are you new <laughs> you know what hey, friend. you know what a stranger <laughs> is it's a friend you haven't met yet let's <laughs> I think, oh, you want me to play with you? And the, you know, the well, coyote's like, <laughs> looks like, like you're from the other side of the tracks. But yeah. That doesn't mean we can't be friends. Yeah. And I'm like, the fuck it doesn't. You can't walk through mud without getting some on your boots. You need to pick better friends. <laughs> you're not doing that. I can't take this one more second. And actually, that coyote is here to distract you while a team of coyotes, there, his like Ocean's Eleven team comes in from the back. This guy to, would like, be murdered in a heartbeat. She has zero street smarts. Let me tell you something else. That dog, if you walk by and you look like you're a gentle soul who would like to pet, she'll bark at you. But there was a guy that jumped into my front seat of my SUV and literally stole everything from my console. And Sky was sleeping one room away, did not wake up, probably saw the guy and was like, you know what? He looks real nice. Did not bark, did not make a single noise. We have it on our ring app. It is a, the guy is in my car for two full minutes and not a noise from this animal. <laughs> How I, I, that the most shocking part is how disappointed that guy that broke in your car was that he's like, all I got was some broken goldfish, a couple <laughs> old smash Skittles. And I hope he just a random Xanax yep. and Tylenol and like a hand sanitizer. It's so true. I hope I, he I'm like going to jail for this. I hope he slid his hand open on my face razor. I'm like, that thing's been in there for <laughs> that thing's hit my lip 50 times, dude. I hope I hope you got tetanus. I Man, I hope you did a quick bikini shave before you went to a pool party with that, too, before that guy <laughs> got it. <laughs> He's like, what do they keep a dog in here? What is this? <laughs> He's like, I have infections. I never. How'd they get a yeast infection? I don't understand. <laughs> Wait a second. Who has a bear as a pet? What <laughs> What kind of. Thank God they didn't release that bear out here to attack me. Wow. Yeah, well, they're not okay, but they have a big bark, and people who break in, they want like a low hanging fruit. They want it to be easy, so it, like you got a dog. Even a they dog that just walks away. Is, 
But except if you're in the Sweeney household, my dog would be like, hey, do you want to come in? Do you want me to show you? Come in the back door. It's never locked. (laughs) Hey, let me give you the code to the gate and come back in. And then I'll show you where the hide key is. And you can maybe make yourself a sandwich and steal the only two pieces of jewelry my mom likes. I'll show you where where they're at. Come on. I love to give a tour of the house. You know, if you want to watch a little Netflix before you go, I don't think you have to be in such a hurry. Yeah, well, my dog then is I have in that way. Uh, I have the exact opposite dog, which like everything about Jupiter could not be more opposite than Sky. Like this is a rescue dog that I found at the um the Downey Animal Shelter in Los Angeles. And just to give you a brief window into what that shelter is like, there it that's where they keep dogs that are it's like Folsom. the FBI is investigating <laughs> something that this dog was involved in. And like when you're you gonna talk, by, dog, you're gonna talk, you're gonna tell us everything you know. They're they're not just like regular cute little rescue. Uh-uh. I mean, it's really God sad. Bless it's them. like it's dogs that can chew through chain link and like razor wire. So they're in these like yeah. sad pens. And so I saw this puppy with his like little sister. And I was not going to get this dog, but then the sister got adopted and I was like, well, clearly this is God telling me that this is my dog, well, which also I just, I don't want to interrupt your story, but I want to back up. You had just lost your, your love of your the life. love of my life. This, yeah. And she, and so then you got, I think you were compelled to adopt this dog in sort of an effort to like. I was because I. I had just lost somebody and then this dog was like sad and alone, had just lost his sister, like she got adopted, he didn't. So I was like, I, Britt says like, you always want like a little cute designer dog, but your problem is you love every dog. Like you, yeah. so then you just like jump on the first one that you see. So I, I jumped on Jupiter and, um, <laughs> that couldn't be I more true. A, you literally, he is. I did, he, he's a mutt and he is from the streets and he is the Chuck Liddell of dogs. He is the drunk Irishman. Like he's ready to fight or f- f- make love to whatever, but it just depends on how you react. Like if you're going to be friendly to him, he'll be nice. But if you want to fight, he will. He's got like this dog blade. has killed. <laughs> he really does. He's like, he's, his body feels like a snake. He's pure muscle, but he's only like 40 pounds. Like we, so coyotes are a thing in los angeles they like where are we live all thing. of our we have like an eight foot fence around just to protect the dogs but i'm telling you all jupiter wants is to go out in some sort of blaze of glory where he fights a gang of coyotes and just and kills then gets them all to, like, he, that's all this dog wants and then he wears their fur like a coat like he's a pimp he'll be like yeah bitch has got it coming to him that's like, yeah, literally. He's going to look like Jon Snow from Game of Thrones with like coyotes. <laughs> and, then, and then he's just going to prowl mean, the neighborhood and be like, mess with me, man. Mess with me. That's Jupiter's like, lot I, in life. That's why like, I know Jupiter's hard and like, there's been a little bit of nipping and stuff, but like, I'm like that dog and I understand each other. Cause I'm like, you're a junkyard dog. You're going to take care of business. You're going to make everybody feel safe. Like you're, you're also, you might get confused with your cataracts and maybe nip at a kid that you think is a coyote but you know what you're gonna get the coyote so that kid needs to just you know put a little, I know. Put a well, little he, you know sporn on it it's all fine he has been a problem child in my life we he's got like a hannibal lecter mask that he wears because he okay he's a, he is a little bit nippy of a dog and we've we've tried to get him trained we well he's a trained dog we trained him like he's the only dog i've ever had that's like this but i called caesar milan's head trainer and was like can you please help me with this dog and they said no absolutely not no that dog loves what it's doing it loves to like but it was he was also so sweet like he used to lay on my feet to keep them warm while i breastfed both of my kids i can't just like send him out to the coyotes i gotta no, like he's take like care that of him. So he one this- cousin that you can call to have him do like ugly stuff you're like oh, i gotta you know i got a job i got you uh, if you could help me out you know a bookie like you you go yeah i'll have a family member that you could go to or you're like i think he probably know bad people i think that's jupiter and the family but they come in handy sometimes especially if you got to get oh, out God. of like, parking tickets or something are you kidding me? Jupiter would help you move. He's more than happy to like rip off his shirt and like lift your big screen TV. Like he is that guy. Like he is just, he's like such a white trash dog. He really is. And like, 
He's like, we always joke. <laughs> sipping on like, some natural light. No, no offense to that. That's my folks' beer, but I'm just saying, I I know where I'm no. from. You you don't want to, you're not going to like thank him for helping you move with beer because you know what will happen. And pl- you got to take the keys to his like hatchback Honda Civic that has like a weird holographic paint job and a really bad tinted windows. And it's like got the muffler <laughs> removed. And like that's what kind of car this dog drives. And he's just ready to like. You're like, we are like most him. likely to you murder gotta someone. Invite Jupiter, the family reunion. Just don't talk about, don't talk about his time inside. Don't talk about gambling. Don't give him any booze. You, you yeah, got that. Don't like, make eye contact. Don't make eye, don't. You, you know what? Like he says, he's dating someone. Just let him talk about it. Keep it clean. Like. <laughs> Oddly enough, don't wear yellow rubber gloves around him because it you freaks know, him out. Him That's off. one of his triggers. We yeah. don't know what happened in he, that downy shelter, but yeah, there was a time that we just he was in juvie before that, and every <laughs> everything's fine. <laughs> well, <laughs> and but that, it's mine. I got to take care of him, and I keep telling Britt, I'm like, he lives a good life. I gave up my butler's pantry. <laughs> Which I've dreamt about my whole life. It's like this little room off the garage that I'm like, I'm going to store all my plates in there. But now that's like Jupiter's room. It's where he loves to be. He doesn't have to go in there because he's. we put one of those basket muzzles so he can eat, drink, pant. He's totally comfortable. I was scared to do it. But one of my friends that's a dog walker was like, it's like glasses for a dog. They don't care. You know what? It's better than the alternative. And so that's that's you just doing what you can do as a dog owner. And Everybody has their thing. I wear Invisalign. Why can't Jupiter wear? It's it's Invisalign <laughs> uh, for my dog. It's, it's it just Invisalign. Keeps in- <laughs> it's headgear. We've all been down that road before. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kristen, have you noticed my armpit smelling great yes. lately? And That's, it's delightful to be able to smell your pits. You know what? You're welcome. It's because each and every gender inclusive deodorant is formulated for sensitive skin like mine, made without aluminum, parabens, baking soda, alcohol, and synthetic fragrances. There's six simple natural ingredients plus essential oils. Each and every uses ingredients like coconut oil and dead sea salt that work together to reduce body odor. In fact, each and every has been found to provide odor protection equal to an antiperspirant without the aluminum. And each and every was founded by two women in the beauty industry who were very frustrated by the lack of natural deodorant options. One of the founders holds a PhD in molecular and developmental biology and used her in-depth understanding about how the body interacts with different ingredients to help design each and every. They just launched sustainable plant-based packaging, which is very cool. It's available for all full-size and mini deodorants, and it's an eco-conscious carbon-negative alternative. Each and every keeps you odor-free all day, plus it's vegan and cruelty-free. Try it risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. And I'm not joking. My armpits are an issue, and they're not with <laughs> each and every, because they start out with like a lavendery kind of scent. Yeah. Yeah. And then they don't get like that weird tangy metallic thing that I think aluminum deodorants yeah. usually give you. It's very nice and it's very silky smooth. And I do have sensitive pits. So I do you want to get it. in there and see? Kristen? I really do. I really do. Okay. Well, visit each and every dot com slash M O M. Each and every dot com slash mom and use promo code mom for 30% off your first purchase. That's not eligible to combine with other discounts or subscriptions. That's promo code mom at eachandevery.com slash mom. Kristen, there's a whole world of wine to discover. Tell me. Well, it can be difficult, you know, to choose the perfect Mm -hmm. bottle, but Wine Access makes it easy with an amazing selection of bottles to choose from and the option to receive curated shipments from their wine club. Yum. I'm telling you, I've upped my game. I know, I, since they sent us wine. Since they sent us wine, now I've had the good stuff and I'm not going back. You That's can't why go I back. love Wine Access. And the Wine Access team, they're all experts and they taste over 20,000 bottles a year. <laughs> I do Can too. Can I apply for you? <laughs> yeah. And the hand select only get the best for their customers. So some of these wines are only available in like their very exclusive wine club where members receive a curated shipment of six premium bottles every season. I'm very excited to receive our shipment. I know each shipment centers on a new theme with tasting videos to guide your experience. I go right for the booze and Kristen watches the videos. Yeah. She's got like a three ring binder. She's learning I wear like loose it. pajamas. I feel very romantic. You can select your preference of all reds or mix it up and it gets delivered straight to your door. But that's not all. Wine Club members also get 10% off of all wine access purchases. So if you do like a bottle here and there, you mm. get 10% off. Okay. Mm-hmm. We know you'll love 
love wine access like we do and want you to join their wine club with us. We worked with the, we worked on this exclusive offer just for our listeners. You get $25 off of each of your first two wine club shipments. Kristen. Yeah. It's $50 savings I on know. these incredible bottles. Just go to our special URL, wineaccess.com slash mom, and sign up for the wine club today. Don't forget, wineaccess.com slash mom for $50 off. The other thing is you it have Shaja. Alive, yes. So Jen currently okay. has Shaja, which is her oh dad. You guys, if. I have four, four dogs. dogs. I have four. Has- but this is what I was going to yeah. say. I'm from such a dog family. I have to like set it up that I had no way to not be this. And my kids have no way to not be this either because we, my grandparents each had their own dog. So they had two dogs. And then when we would all go to their house in Oklahoma for Thanksgiving, my uncle had his Airedale, would bring that dog. And then my <laughs> uncle Airedale. Sonny always had three dogs and they're not small he would have like two boxers and like a irish setter like all huge dogs we would bring our dog and it would be this like enormous tangle of dogs fighting underneath the the thanksgiving table but it was like normal that's it that was bliss to have all these dogs around you so i've always had dogs around me we kaylee was so my husband and I met at the dog park. I know which you guys is, it's all and kaylee was so sweet she lived to be what she 16? was so sweet 16 that was my husband's dog i know yeah and when she so when my dad passed away three years ago we my dad's dog came to live with us you guys it's like it should be a reality show just with the dogs just the dog's personalities alone all you need is that damn airedale in there to be real snotty i don't know what i'm doing okay i'm i'm the only jaja jaja is deaf and blind and she does not give a shit uh, she does not, not give a shit anything. where she shits. <laughs> exactly. So the only thing that she knows or that her like very senile brain remembers is that her nose works and that she loves to eat food. So she just stands in the middle of the kitchen, sort of like a sundial and like tries to sniff out where food might get dropped by the kids. She's the most lovely dog. And I hope she lives forever, but she won't. Jupiter will because it's, it's going to torture lot, me. But. That's our lot in life. He'll be 30. I swear to God, he'll be 30. But this, but Jaja, like, all she wants is food. And every day between four or five, she has to poop. So it's like, if in that time frame you see her standing, you've got to maneuver her outside to a door or she will crap wherever she is standing. And it's usually in my kitchen. It's usually on a rug I really like or in my kitchen. Oh. And um, just when I think like she's on her last leg, I will see her halfway up on the counter in my kitchen trying to pull a loaf of bread down. And she'll and eat the bag. Crapping at the same. This dog she'll eats eat the, the bag. bag. That's a All woman after my All own heart. She's like, I need carbs. <laughs> I'm not dealing with the bag. I'm eating right through it. I mean, we've all done that a time or two. You've you've eaten the paper on a burger. You're like, you know what? I'm not dealing with it. Taking it out. I'm going to just eat through it. That's right. It's like me throwing away the um all the I have to eat all the cinnamon rolls once I've made them because That's I can't leave. Ha- anybody can do the math and figure out that I ate those. So she's like, uh, and cinnamon rolls. That's you guys. When she jumps up, her body is so dysfunctional at this age. She's like a thirteen or fourteen year old lab. The the like torque motion of her jumping up onto the counter makes her crap at the same time. Oh shit! So we. <laughs> You will go into the kitchen. We're like, oh boy, what's missing oh. up here? It's like, oh, it's the leftover pasta or whatever. She just jumped up there to to steal. But I love her, you guys. I don't know what to do. I'm like, you can't then, do anything. So what are you supposed to do? Your dad left you cash money to take care of that dog. You're in for it. You're that dog. He is really, gonna- d- he really did. He was like this. This dog needs to have drive through food because that's what she existed on. And that's why she's so food obsessed right now. Although Kaylee, before she passed away, chewed through a green bean can on Thanksgiving. It was empty. We still have the can because we were like, what a machine. She's so food obsessed. It has like all of her teeth marks See, through and the Sky, can like a can opener. <clears throat> that's what's fun. Sky is so not. I mean, she is, but she doesn't want to hurt your feelings or be rude. <laughs> <laughs> she's like... She's like trembling at the idea that you might give her a little piece of steak. So she just sits there. But now we have a second dog who doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> so this is my fault. So I, my. This is before, it, Jen's fault in literally every direction. 
It is absolutely. We Let me set it up by saying happy. The first dog I ever got as an adult was this enormous pit bull named Venus. And I did not know that she would be an enormous pit bull. She was just this cute. She looks like the pokey little puppy. And I thought she was some adorable rescue she dog. Was a tank. And she was a tank. And I this cable guy came. I remember I had her like three months and this cable guy came to do something. He goes, That's a beautiful pit bull. And I was like, shut your mouth. I don't know what you're talking about. And he was like, No, I breed pit bulls, and that's a beautiful she was like an American bulldog. Yeah. A 90 pound fierce tank she was actually really sweet and the best behaved dog that i've ever had the best. but <clears throat> i have this knack for finding dogs that have gone through foster homes they have just like had a life that it, you shake your head at like <laughs> i'm shaking then, my head uh, currently because i found more dogs like that and Kristen accidentally got one let me just <laughs> let me just say though a, a little a little shout out to Venus. When Jen and I were first friends, she had to go somewhere on a work trip and she was like, "Would you mind helping me with Venus? Would you walk Venus?" And I was like, "Totally." And then I got to the door and I was like, "All that Venus is doing right now is deciding whether or not she wants to kill me." Like literally she's so big that I could just walk in and she'd be like, "Hmm." I don't know if I like you or not, but she was so awesome. I got the leash. She didn't, I didn't even have to put on her, just held it. And we walked around yeah. the block and she pooped in her spot and peed in her spot. She was so easy. She's just this giant dog that was so sweet. And it made me, she was. Like, I just thought she was like a big old broad. She looked like, yeah. she was like the neighborhood, like lady that you'd like go talk to about your problems. She'd smoke a cigarette. She's, that's, she was, awesome. she was like, d- she was like this huge barrel chested dog that like none of the dogs at the dog park wanted to mess with. But I taught her how to like, I would feed her from a fork and she would sniff it to see if she wanted it first or not. And then gently like take it off the fork with her front teeth. Like she was. Did you use the same A gentle fork? giant. I'm sure I did. Gross. I didn't. You know what? Who cares? But here's, here's what she also taught me was I think every single woman needs to have a dog like that because I never felt alone. I never felt scared because I always had her. Even lived in Venice Beach, which can be a pretty sketchy neighborhood. Yeah. You know, I, lived I, sadly, in my carport. I know there'd be like some naked guy pooping in your front garden. <laughs> like, like, what are you looking at when you looked at him? So, but with her, I never, I never felt scared. I never felt alone. And she like one thing, thousand percent prepared me for being a mother too oh my god you want to prepare for being mother get a dog get get a a dog dog because they look at you like a person does like how could you how could you feed me lunch late like they're so they keep you responsible also you won't sleep with as many people if that matters because you're like i gotta go for sure i got a dog you can't i wish i would have done that in my 20s that would have been no sleepovers man because you got to get home and let that dog out or she'll destroy the place yeah you absolutely do and you know the thing i learned from (laughs) i literally potty trained i was i was so i really enjoy training dogs like potty training them crate training them and I've trained several. The only one I couldn't is the current one I have. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll jump to that story. But when yeah. I was potty training my kids, I literally approached it like I was potty training a dog. I, I yep. The only difference is you're giving a kid a Skittle instead of a greenie. But if they did eat a greenie, <laughs> they would just have okay teeth. It'd be a It'd one-time be, thing. Yeah. You, and your kid would probably be like, they're not terrible. It's not as good as a Skittle. But you do. You figure out structure and like you got to walk them and you got it. They're begging for your uh, attention. They'll shit in your shoe, eat your shoe, eat your underwear, yeah. eat your Invisalign if you don't pay attention to them. Um, I've all my toddlers have done all of that. In all seriousness, it taught me as a very like selfish young person in my 20s that cared only about like pure id sort of stuff. I I never hesitated to do what she needed first yeah it's which good. i think was a good thing yeah. for me to learn because i, in your I 20s. wouldn't have yeah because otherwise i would have been like so i want to do this i want to do that yeah <laughs> 
But then you got a dog, and I know that you took such good care of her, even though she was cray cray. She was she was a cray cray dingo. Literally not a dog. She was an animal that was meant to be in the wild, and we all know it. And everybody thought the same thing, and I felt validated by the trainer. She was like one of those Mexican beach dogs, kinda, <laughs> she was, you know, like she's like I do not need a home. <laughs> Like, I, I will just <laughs> grace you with my presence. We will have some time together and then I will leave you. She was, she was real sweet, but she was getting too protective. And when we had Finn, I saw her like launch a poodle 25 feet in the air. And, yeah, a, you and I go, yeah. we're, this is going to end up with me losing our home at the, at and this you, point. You, you got it. Protect your kids, you number one, because that's what that's why Jupiter wears his muzzle was because that that was like oh it, you could see the you, writing you, on the wall and you're a fool if you don't yeah. take precautions you have to you yep. have to be um, responsible about it and so that's what I did it broke my heart and I didn't have a dog for five years and then we got Sky and then <laughs> oh good times. Let me make a disclaimer, okay? Uh-huh. My kids uh-huh. love dogs too. I don't know where they get it from. But all my son has asked for for years is a dog for Christmas. And we got this hot tip that there was a, I don't know. We have we been fooled? We've we got been this tip that they fooled. That they were labradoodles. And I'm like, well, why would those need rescued? And they but got they rescued were rescue. so fast. They were they went so fast because I thought, well, that must mean they really are, because other people just looking at them could determine. That they were labradoodles. You know what I mean? Those those are very yeah. expensive. Those are like three thousand dollar dogs. So, you know me and a good so deal. I convinced I convinced my husband that we needed to get one for my son for his birthday, and we went to look at them and decided that we couldn't just get one. We should get two of them. And Kristen was like, "You are crazy. You don't need one more dog." You certainly don't need two more dogs. And then I texted her pictures. And about four hours later, she was like, I just got one. Okay. F- so, no, that n- I called the rescue and I was like, I'm just putting a feeler <laughs> out there. Um, my my friend r- has ruined me and I've drank the Kool-Aid and I'm going into dumb land. Can- do you have any more of those dogs from that big litter? And they go, no, no, they've all been adopted. I was like, okay, good. That's a sign. I'm going to just walk away. And then they called me back an hour later and they said, we didn't accept the application for this last one. She's the runt. So I'm like, of course. Of course. Of course you have to. So I went in and I was like, I'm going to go decide if I like this dog and I'm going to play it tough. And she had just been. (laughs) You guys should just. I I don't know why I didn't even went in. So then they were like, "This is the story of Kristen's life." This by the is way. me. I'm gonna go in there and act tough, but and then I'm, I'm gonna, gonna melt like. Yeah. Then they put her on me, and she'd just woken up from anesthesia, and she's so crusty and looked Aww. like literally a disaster. Like I was like, "You, you look like a you're, you're gonna be a mess. Like you, you, you got problems written all over you." And I'm gonna sign on the dotted line. And we brought her home, and it's been kind of a shit show since but i love her she's okay. listening right now we're in the same like, boat what the fuck they're they're really the most loving dogs i kind of have ever seen like so we have um one is named magic he was going to be named donut which is a name my jen's gone through but 18 the kids- dog names on these dogs and i've we've colin and i both landed on two of them and so now we can't not call them the other names we're like stick to it stick to it i know i don't know I call them I call them Daisy, which is your dog's yeah. name, all the time. I don't know what they're named. I know maybe that's why they don't come when I call, Shit, when I call them. No, but. they're making a decision to not come. So they're if they were Labradoodles, which is supposed to be a very smart dog, th- that's my proof that they're not because we we're going on seven eight months with these dogs, and I cannot convince them that there is a backyard and and it's not the center of my bed because. <laughs> These dogs are destroying my home. I'll never get rid of them. I love them more than I, I just anything. So screwed. They are ruining my home. You know what my dog's like? My dog Daisy is like the girl that you knew in high school who liked to shoplift all the time. And then yep. and then she got caught and got scared straight but there's always that like twinkle in her eye where she looks like she wants to like commit a crime or like steal yes. something she's o- daisy's always like side 
like side eyeing me. Like, I'm like, what's your deal, man? And forever she was like pooping in like hidden corners. And I was like, I smell poop. And I would find it like, there's no way her body physically fit into a corner behind know. a shelf. They can like but if wedge she's, like, just their bottom underneath the couch. She's, it's like, incredible. Like a ping pong ball that's like bouncing. She's like a projectile, boosh. And it like goes into the back. It, I'm like moving bookshelves. I'm like, what? What are you doing to me right now? It's been. I don't. This dog is gonna be the death I, of me. When we got her, I immediately regretted the decision, and I wanted to punch oh. Jen in the face. But we were in quarantine, yeah. and so then I was like, "No shame in giving her back." There was a real long list for her, and this is too much in a quarantine for me right now. And our golden retriever literally is so upset; she's like losing hair, and she kept eating the puppy food so that she's so she's bulking up. She's she's emotionally eating. <laughs> And I'm like, Sky, you put on like 25 pounds. She's doing it, I think, to starve Same. the other I have dog. Too. I know, but she's starving out the other dog because the dog is such an animal. And like every terrible behavior a dog does, this dog does. This dog, when we got her, would run after us and bite us in the butt crack, literally between the cheeks. Bang, and, it would, and the kids were like, ah! so I said, <laughs> we've got one shot and it's this dog trainer that we'd heard of that you have to have all these, it's so gross. You have to have these references. And so we literally to dropped her off and this guy had like 14 like earlobe rings, you know, like the big like gauges. He's like, is it the guy with the show? I is don't it that know. new That's guy what with people the show? Ask me, but I don't know. He's very nice, and you know what? He did a great job. We dropped her off for two weeks at like juvenile oh detention. God. We picked her up, and then we all had to. <laughs> she was in juvie. She was in juvie. And I went to dog juvie. I know. We all just sit around and learn how to talk to each other. You know, like go through therapy as a family. And then they gave us this little. It's not a shocker. That is not. It is not that at all. It is a vibration collar that corrects her behavior. But all I have to do is show this dog this collar, and she's like, "I'm gonna." At some point, you're gonna have to charge the yeah, fucker. Me and you, and I'm yeah. gonna go rogue. <laughs> And I'll be there. I'll be I there. I mean, this dog, like, we have to work with her all the time. Whereas Sky, like, I can't remember crate training her because all I said was, like, you have to poop outside. And she was like, oh, God. Okay. Okay. I just want you to yeah. like me. Just, I'm sorry. Yeah. But this that's why I think that, fucker, like, they, they, I say that they're super dumb dogs, but they're really they're smart so because smart. we, so magic is huge. He's, he looks like a black sheep dog. They're very different. Like, I keep saying that these dogs, their mom was, talk about wrong side of the tracks. I think she got knocked up by two separate dogs, which is totally possible because some of them looked a little like Chihuahua-ish and then some of them are like huge, shaggy haired. Like, so the fact that I have these two dogs, magic, you can be like, hey, Madge, I need you to go back into the crate, okay, bedtime. And he's like, okay, I'll do that. Like, whatever. (laughs) Like, he will let you hold him. He will let you do anything to him and then penny if you don't know where she is you can rest assured that she is messing like she is shitting on a comforter up one thousand percent like we honestly you could like we'll be watching tv and i'm like (gasps) i can't hear where's penny it's just like a kid you're like too quiet yeah someone's playing with an electrical outlet even my five-year-old is like, uh oh, uh oh, Penny. Like we go looking <laughs> for, her and I mean, you could you could expect her to be like hot wiring a car down the street because she is so unpredictable and bad. She ate my flip flops this morning, both of them in record time. I know they ate- in the quarantine. You can't. It's oh god, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. This dog is a whole thing. I love her to death. Here's the thing with the the kids. We got to talking about the dogs because both of us have known people. To have had to put their dogs down this week. And that is like a whole conversation. But if you, I, my kids are so in love with both of these dogs. And if you are a mom and you have a dog and you see your kids love that dog, there's a part of you that's like, this is the sweetest, most wonderful thing I've ever seen. And then there's a part of you that has it locked away in the back of your head that you're like, someday this dog is going to die and it's going to be the saddest day of their life. Like it's weird. I think it happens sort of simultaneously because our dog, like we know that sky is probably not, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be quiet because if my kids hear me, they will literally start bawling because sky's five. I will. And if, if a dog yeah. can last, you know, 10 years, that's a good life. 15 years. Wow. Like anything above yeah. that is even more impressive. So 
They're doing the math. Meanwhile, Daisy's going to live as long as a parrot. That dog's going to be 120, and I'm going to have to, like, will it to somebody. I know. I'm going to be gone. They're going to be like, my. I know. Eleanor's like, I don't want her. (laughs) Yeah, nobody nobody wants this dog. Yeah. Well, I do kind of think, like, You've seen that meme that's like no, nobody loves a dog more than the dad that did not want the dog, which totally reminds it's me of fantastic. your husband. It's a whole TikTok thing. It's a whole TikTok thing of parents it who is. didn't want the dog, and then you see the woman wearing the dog in a Bjorn cleaning the pool. Yes, but she's great. She's actually super cuddly. I will tell you this: we, I got into it with my kids about these dogs because I'm like they're at the age my kids are nine and seven they can understand the responsibility that it takes to care for a dog and I think that's the most wonderful thing about having a dog is I'm like this dog depends on you for food and for water and for love and by the way this dog like you you get the benefits of this dog you it's a two-way street this dog loves you unconditionally but you've got to do the work with this dog so they're like what and so we have four my my kids have four chores in the morning. Four total for the day, if we're lucky. And that is make your bed. Oh God, I'm such a bad floor, parent. Pick up your my kids are a little bit older. Or you know, Finn is two years older. That's nine year old, almost ten year old is a big difference. And we have them feed and water the dogs. And then Finn gets to which he loves, walk the dog two blocks, Daisy, two blocks, or t- around our our little neighborhood street block two times big it's not a 45 minute walk to the canyon he's going around the block two times so he decided one day that his chores were just optional lets the dogs in daisy runs up into my bed pees in the middle of the bed all over my comforter Uh. not a little bit of pee 11 hours of holding pee so like a flood of pee and then i went downstairs and he was watching bunked so as I hear like, Camp Kiki Waka, this dog is peeing in my bed. I lost my ever living mind. And I told him, this is not how you show this dog love. Get off here. <laughs> and then I I probably yelled some some things. I was upset. Yeah. And then they lost yeah. their iPad for a week. So now they know the wrath of their mother. By the way, the brunt of the job will always fall on the arm on the shoulders of a mom. Just so you know, if you do get a dog, it's going to be on well, you, but you're going to teach them along the way. Not in my house. It's my husband. And that's why I'm always open to getting more dogs because he, you're he lucky. up with their well, dogs. Colin does a good job, but it really ends up on me. And well, most- I'm the one who remembers like that they need health care and stuff like that. That's not really my husband's cup of tea. We sort of divide the responsibility. And that's the same with the kids. He makes sure that they have breakfast, but... He cannot spell the word dentist. So that it's just, that's good. Our brains work He's also very so good to- with dogs. He's been, he's a, like he's had an Australian shepherd and people that have had Australian shepherds, they have to be good with dogs because those dogs can memorize 3,000 different tricks. And if you don't work them, they spin. That's why I went with Sky. God bless her. She's sitting at my feet right now. She knows two and a half tricks and they're not yeah. that impressive but I don't care. His Australian Shepherd, she's the one that she passed away two years ago. She was 16. She brought us together. This dog, if it had fingers, it could have typed. It was so smart. It's like, incredible. She she could like communicate with her eyes. And I did it. I said to him one time ago, I think that dog reads your mind. And he was like, oh, you're such a weird hippie, which you shut up. And I go, just think, just call her in your head. And sure enough, she came in well, his head. They're amazing creatures. You know, dogs can smell cancer. They can smell breast cancer. They can. Yeah. That's when you're, they've done videos where like um, a surveillance video is inside of your house and, and you, the person leaves from work and they're driving home. The dog will start to stir. I read and, this book. And different times, not just at like five o'clock. They no. get on a routine. It's like they sense and they can, it gives me like goosebumps. It's awesome. There's, I read a book. It's called Dogs Know When Their Owners Are Coming Home or something like that's that. That's real where on they, the nose. They, what I, yeah. Yeah. That's a real, it you really know what is. that book's about. Yes. It, Look, I bought it immediately upon reading the title That's of the book. That's not like That's a Danielle Steele, which is like seduction. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, this is what happens when you leave your office and your dog sees you and you go home. There's a camera. Yeah. Shot, shot collar in my pants is another really great <laughs> That's gonna be for book me. where you know what you're getting. Exactly. 
Well, but then there's Jupiter. Jupiter's not like that. Like he he he's not smart. He's just like all, all game. Right. He's we all just- have different kinds of intelligence, Jen. He's you know what? Like some people are more book related, and some just need to be part of uh, the the world in the landscape yeah, of he's, the world. He's not a strong reader. That's a really good way to describe him. He's not. You know? Did I tell you about struggle? how he killed all those possums in my backyard? Oh, I feel like this I, is a. I know this. This is my uh, unbelievably gross. When my husband, my husband was out of town for work, you had those two and babies. um, I had two babies, like a five month old and a three year old. We just gotten out of the bath, and my dog was really excited to go outside, and this my dog Jupiter. I let him outside, and he's having a full-on fight with a possum the size of a cat out in the middle of my tiny Los Angeles yard. And uh, I had to throw a golf ball at him to get because I'm not going out to the where the a possum looks like so a gigantic damage, rat. <laughs> no, know? it was at his side because I was aware. I'm like, you don't know. I, I can't hurt the possum or the it. dog. Jupiter is not the hero of this story. He attacks this possum. The reason the possum was so huge, it was a mom possum that had just had a ton of babies. So I called my friend Dennis, which is also Kristen's friend. He's always wanting a shout out. So here's your shout out, Dennis. He always Uh, wants a shout out. And then he's not the, I would, I was like, there are, I feel like men who would handle that situation. (laughs) And then there's because Dennis. in this particular situation, he did not deserve a shout out because he was like, I <laughs> called him and I said, there is a dead possum in my or a halfway dead possum in my yard that you need to come and kill. He's like, oh, no, it's just plain dead. It's a possum. And I'm like, Dennis, it's Get like your ass zombie over here. walking through my yard. <gasps> I have two babies screaming. I can't. What am I going to do? I'm from Nebraska, but I'm not taking a shovel out there to finish this job. It's huge. I can't do it. (laughs) So Dennis comes over and screamed with me like a woman on the porch for a while. And then (laughs) this was his plan. This was his plan. He goes, send Jupiter back out to finish the job. Uh, And did Jupiter? Yeah. Oh, God, gross. It was horrible. But then I made Dennis. than anybody else, though. I know. Because at one point, Dennis was just out there swinging a shovel at both the dog and the possum. And I'm like, this is not going to work. Just So he got the dead possum. He put it in the garbage. And then we had these possums, these baby possums to feed that lived in a bush in the backyard, which eventually Jupiter killed every single one of them, too. And that's how he got his taste for blood. I'm not possums proud of this are dog. So He's gross. Possums? Possum? They're rats. They're d- they're gross. rats. They're so gross. That's, I love all I kind of love most of all animals. I can even go down the road of a snake and I'm not afraid of spiders. You get a possum or a rat near me, I'm I'm not I don't feel good about it. Cockroaches too. I don't trust anything that can ha- handle a nuclear fallout. Nope. Not even in Wally when there, there was an animated I, one to make to be cute. Yeah. I hated it. I that's what I think Kristen's quote unquote uh, Labrador might have been part possum because she kind of had like those teeth that went every place. But you know the weird when, uh, what were the in the Lion King were the ones yeah 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 let's go oh the the, the jackals the ja- the jackals oh. is that right the no 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 the um hyenas the hyenas ah, ah. the one that had like yeah. the cockeyed weird situation going maybe rabies I think that's what I adopted it's fine she might well God bless her but she get she came to me and then she's now making another family happy and I know that for sure. That's good. That's that's best case scenario. We, well, yeah, it costs a lot of cash and a lot of begging. <laughs> throw throw money at the problem. I is, mean, some what you times have to you do have to. Sometimes. And when it comes to dogs, that's where all my money goes. I want to say that, like, I I feel like I have to defend Jupiter a little bit because he's not like everybody. When I tell them that when they meet this dog, they're like. That dog, he's so sweet. Like, he's so sweet that we used to live on this busy street that had like a fancy cheese shop around the corner. And 
we found out eventually that like he was the mascot of the cheese shop. Like everybody's screensaver on their phone because he would go to the fence. They would like park there for work and he would let them pet him. And like, I don't think Jupiter was bad. I just think that he like, also the thing is, is Jupiter small. So whenever a dog is small, you sort of think that they're, I don't know, there's a small but mighty thing, but they also, you think, oh, they're really cute, but he's a terrier. And so he's going to get in there and he's uh, fist very fight. Napoleon. He's, he's very Napoleon. Just like not me. Uncommon. We lived, the street was so busy. This one time I was inside working and I heard, Jupe was outside and I heard him barking. And then I heard like a metal bang on metal and I heard him yelp. And I ran outside and there was this like 90 year old man. Now, let me set it up for you. I was like 10 months pregnant at this moment. I was so enormously pregnant that like getting off the couch made me like breathe heavy. But I I run outside. I know this isn't going to depict me in the most uh, <laughs> positive light. There's this like 89, 90 year old dude that had walked by my back, my gate and hit the dog, <gasps> hit Jupiter through the gate with his cane. And I did the math. He had this nurse with him that acted like she didn't speak English at the time. And I'm yelling at both of them. I go, did he just hit that dog? I heard the dog yelp. Why the dog yelp? And she was acting like she didn't speak English. And he was like, he was barking at me. And I go, he lives here, motherfucker. You can pick a different <laughs> route. So you have this like... I, what would you do if you're driving by to see this woman who is like giving birth currently screaming at this 90 year old man with a cane? Like, but he hit. I'd slow dog. down and just see how it ends. I'd be like, <laughs> I think we roll money on this. I think we I'm going to go for the pregnant lady. But that guy's got a cane. I don't know. I really don't know how this I, is going to turn out. So that's where Jupiter got it is for me, I oh, guess. <laughs> Sucks. Nobody should ever. I know. That's like, what kind of bullshit is that? And people that are mean to pets should all get oh. a straight ticket to somewhere south. As far as I I'm think concerned. every town, every t like town square needs a giant shark tank in the middle of it. And you just pitch people in if they're so mean they can animals. see how the food chain works. Yep. Yeah. You know what? We're totally. all animals and there's something bigger than you out there. So no. Yes. It's, you know, <laughs> exactly. I get I get real. Uh, I love doggies too much. I know. We love dogs. Uh, if you'd like to listen and subscribe to our podcast, you can do so anywhere you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to see us actually on a video version of our podcast, you can go to YouTube at I Mom So Hard Podcasts and watch us do all this business. So thank you so much. I'm Kristen. The blonde is Jen. I'm Jen. And we're hashtag I Mom So Hard. <laughs> see you later.